92.7 WGMD, the talk of Del Marva, 16 and a half minutes after 4 o'clock. Claire Lopez is the vice president for research and analysis at the Center for Security Policy. You may know of that Washington think tank. Frank Gaffney is the president of it, and you see him all the time on TV, on Fox, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Ms. Lopez, welcome to WGMD, and thanks for being with us. Well, thanks very much for having me. And um, even though you went to Maxwell, which uh, those of us at Newhouse used to call the Little Red Schoolhouse up on the hill, um, I don't know if you ever had a THB at Cosmos on Marshall Street or a slice of pizza at the Varsity. Um, you can't get one at Cosmos anymore because it's closed. You can tell I went to oh, Syracuse, this right? Is, uh, Syracuse University. You bet. Yeah, absolutely. In, uh, New York. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I'm a I'm a Syracuse man. All right. Now then, we uh, are aware here in Delaware, and we have a huge port up there in Wilmington, that there are some shadowy Middle Eastern Mohammedans that uh, took over Port Canaveral in Florida, where we have various strategic assets like uh, nuclear missile submarines that come in and out of there. And there's an awful lot of cargo that uh, goes in and out of the Port of Wilmington. And there are people, uh, ostensibly Americans, who are just all too happy to turn the operation of that port over to a company that apparently uh, part of it is owned by somebody who is or was related to Saddam Hussein and by extension Hamas and Hezbollah or, you know, to fill us in on that. Uh, the details are weird and they're shifting all the time, right? Well, right. So what we're talking about is a Middle Eastern company called Gulf Tainer. Mm. Gulf Tainer operates ports and port facilities all around the world. The problem is that it is co-owned by the Emir of Sharjah, that's one of the United Arab Emirates in the Persian Gulf, and the family, uh, the Jafar family of Iraq, uh, which uh, is the family of Saddam Hussein's nuclear mastermind, uh, Dr. Jafar, uh, headed up Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction programs. Yes, he really did have them. Uh, and this Dr. Jafar, back in the day, actually designed, perhaps never built, but designed a miniaturized nuclear warhead. So this is who owns Gulf Tainer. Now, Gulf Tainer is in a joint venture with a Russian company that makes a container, the kind that go on ships and also on trains and trucks all over the world. It looks like a normal box, you know, the container um, kind of a uh, 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 cargo uh, container that you see all over the world. Sure. Well, this particular kind is called the Club K that Russia makes and exports, and unfortunately, inside it contains a cruise missile, missile launch system. So we've got Gulf Tainer owned by uh, a, a United Arab Emirates emir and the Jafar family of Saddam Hussein's nuclear mastermind in a joint venture with a Russian company that makes this cruise missile launch system inside of a box called Club K. So Gulf Tainer was able to gain a 35-year lease in 2014, that's four years ago, to operate the cargo container terminal at Port Canaveral, Florida. Well, what could go wrong? What could go wrong is yeah. the name of one of the earliest papers uh, that two uh, fantastic investigative journalists, Mary Fanning and Alan Jones. Yeah, I've had them on the air here. Yeah, I've had them on the air. Security policy. Yeah. yeah. They have written now, and, and, and we have published at our website, www.centerforsecuritypolicy.org, three of these papers about this. So that's Florida, but let's let's bring it home to Delaware. Uh, where I think many of your listeners are. Oh, yeah. And earlier this year, in April 2018, um, the uh, Delaware state-owned Diamond State Port Corporation sure. approved a deal under which Gulf Tainer is going to get a 50-year lease, not just to the cargo container facilities, but the entire port 
of Wilmington, Delaware. The Delaware General Assembly has rubber stamped this, and it looks like the deal is just about done that this company, Middle East company, with ties to the Russian company, Gulf Tainer, is going to get a hold of the entire operations of the Port of Wilmington, Delaware. Now, the last thing that I saw on the Internet, and of course you can't put anything on the Internet unless it's true, is that President Trump uh, wants to have final approval uh, for any deal like this. Uh, and there probably are other ones that are trying to percolate up all over the country uh, so that he may have the authority eventually, you know, sooner, if not later, well, to block this. Sort of, sort of. There is um, a um, an agency called the the, uh, the Committee for Foreign Investment in the United States. Yeah. CFIUS. Sure. And and that is a a group of agencies that would include well it's overseen by the Treasury Department but includes the Department of State the Department of Homeland Security, Commerce, Trade, and what other other whatever other agencies yeah there's nine of them to do a review of any kind of transaction lease or purchase that would have a national security implication. Well you kind of think maybe our ports our critical infrastructure ports might fall under this well of course well we think so uh but two times now in 2014 for port canaveral florida and now this year 2018 uh cifius has blown off the national security investigation and said oh no problem we don't need to do that just skip it and we have no idea why now uh you're mentioning president trump who just recently signed into law a new bill um, about CFIUS and about CFIUS reform. Um, But unfortunately, that very comprehensive bill for reform of CFIUS is kind of uh, physician heal thyself. It's Mm. sort of uh, laying out, it it, it lays out the measures that CFIUS ought to take to reform itself and and to become uh, more... uh, uh, of, a, of a responsive agency uh, for review of these kinds of deals. It's got 18 months to do it, um, and there's no real um, deadlines or, or hard and fast measures. You must do this, you will do this, and Congress will review if you have complied. There's none of that. It's just, well, Cifius, you really ought to do this and this and this, and uh, you know, you don't have to start for 18 months. That's what's in the new bill that Trump signed. Now, yes, the president uh, has the authority on the grounds of national security um, to to immediately put a halt or at least a pause um, to the Delaware port, Wilmington port deal uh, and and to and to pause or stop um, operations at Port Canaveral. But unfortunately, I'm not even sure he's aware of, of what's going on, although advisors close to him certainly are because we've told them sure um are you able to hang on a few minutes i need to take a quick break can you stand by with us all right thank you very much all right um i want to get back to ms lopez in a moment md the talk of del marva claire lopez from the center for security uh in dc Ms. Lopez, uh, talking about the uh, Wilmington Port and the uh, Middle Eastern firm that is going to be operating it, they can do anything they want there at this point, can't they? Well, the thing is that we'll never know. And um, with this Club K, as I described, um, the shipping container box thing uh, that the Russians make and have sold to countries like Iran, with that Club K... Um, disguised, looking exactly like any other intermodal uh, container on ships and 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 uh, railway cars and trucks. Uh, there's no way to know uh, if or when one of those might come into this country. Now, um, there are inspections at ports uh, loading ships bound for the United States. Yes, there are inspections at our ports when when cargo comes in. But there's no way that the inspectors can can look at anything more than a tiny percentage 
to really inspect anything more than a tiny percentage of those cargo containers. And the thing is, too, that the missiles inside of a Club K, the Russian Club K model, um, just sit there dormant. There, there's no way to, to tell they're in there until they're activated, which can be done remotely by satellite and who knows where they are by that time. Remember, Port Canaveral went over to Gulf Chainer four years ago. Now, here's another thing. If, if, we have no idea, but if one of those containers got into this country anywhere from one to four years ago, uh, it could be in Topeka, Kansas by now. It could be anywhere. If the, the signal were given from a satellite the lid would pop off of that Club K container. The four missiles would stand up, and we have zero way of defending against a missile inside the United States. All of our defenses, such as they are, are pointed outwards, as one might expect, really, to the north and the west primarily. By the way, the Atlantic coast and the Gulf coast of the United States have zero zero uh, missile defense or radar systems, but internal to the country, if one of those missiles, cruise missile, hypersonic cruise missiles that can carry anything from a biological, chemical, um, conventional or nuclear, or even an EMP warhead, if one of those went off inside the middle of the country, we have no way to touch it, no way to stop it. Okay. The professional left in this country since uh, right after World War I has been telling us that the Soviets and then the Russians are not our enemy. We don't have anything to worry about from them because they're just socialist humanitarians. Until Donald Trump won the election, then all of a sudden they became the worst enemy in the entire world. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um can we speak about this again some other time in the near future? Because this is of tremendous concern. Uh, yes. It's not only Russia, but it's also China. Um, yes. I've heard quite and a North few things. Yes, well, China can do things that uh, North Korea can't, but the two of them are a couple of real serious problem children, obviously. And uh, uh, you and Frank Gaffney's office there in D.C., I guess, right? Yes, we are uh, in downtown Washington, D.C. here. Okay, all right. Well, I'll, I'll be there next week for a radio row and uh, with FAIR. I'll give you folks a call, and, uh, you know, if there's time, maybe I can come over and shake hands. That would be terrific. And in the meantime, www.centerforsecuritypolicy.org has all of the papers, uh, occasional papers, we call them, um, and mm -hmm. other articles, and also radio programs that Frank has done on securefreedomradio.com yeah. uh, at the website. Okay, I saw that. Thank you very much, and uh, the very best of luck. And let's stay on top of this, and uh, perhaps we'll be speaking again in the near future. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Have a great day now. 92.7.